Okay, here's what we're going to try to solve this week. Take a look at this spice rack. <clears throat> Some of them are stacked one on top of another. Some are stacked on top of the console on the, the electric range. We're going to try to cure this problem. My wife's been after me for quite a while to take care of the situation. Um, we're going to make one that's a little deeper for the larger spices and a smaller one for the shorter ones. The spice rack is going to be 40 inches long and so I've laid out two pieces here um, of half inch stock and you can make it out of whatever material you have on hand. This measures two and a half inches um, wide by half inch thick and then I have another piece here that is two and an eighth inch and it will be the back actually so they will set like this uh, then the next thing that we'll look at is that I have these uh, I think they're called gallery spindles and I'm going to put one of them every three inches under the front piece that will set like this and then the spindles will be mounted between the bottom and this half by half piece that goes on the front. The first thing that I need to show you is that on the end of the these uh, the front rail that goes on the front of the of the spice rack. And, uh, we need to make something that wraps around the end. And so what I've done, I've cut a couple of little blocks of wood, and I'm going to glue them onto the end of this half by half, and then. After the glue is dried, then I will cut them, cut a profile here on the on the scroll saw that will be half by half, and this will go back to the the back piece like that. That <clears throat> will become clear in a little while here, and uh, we'll also put one of these little spindles about halfway in the middle here on on the each end and then if I remember how I want to do this I'll put one right here on the corner and then we'll start from each end three inches apart coming to the center and then uh, there will be a little adjustment I'll have to do with the last two p uh, spindles that I put in in order to match up with the 40 inches here at my all-purpose bench, I've got things temporarily set up here so that I can glue the block onto the end and it'll be nice and square when I get done. What I've done is taken some, some painter's tape and I've put it down on a piece of wood and now I'm going to uh, spread some glue on, I think I only need on one surface. So now I'm going to lay that in right here on the end. Get it all nice and square. And take another clamp. It's a spring clamp. Nothing fancy here. And I'm going to attempt to get everything squeezed into place so that the glue is squeezing out all around. Next thing I'll do then is to take my other clamp here and I will compress the side piece to the front rail so that it's nice and firm and uh, then I'll wipe the glue out and clean up the joint a little bit and we'll let it dry.
I've just taken the clamps off and now the next thing to do is to clean this up a little bit with some sandpaper and uh, then we'll draw the shape on the end for our side rail and then we'll cut it out on a scroll saw. Sanding and sanding and sanding. This is something you can't hurry on. You just have to take your time. Get it all smoothed down where you can't feel any ripples in it anymore. Now I believe we can trace our design on there and we'll be moving on. all the time. Came out pretty good. That'll just wrap around the end just perfect. My poor old spindle sander, it just kind of sits here in the corner. Doesn't get used a whole lot, but boy it's sure handy when you need it. Like right now, I need to sand these corners. These corners on the front of the spice rack, I cut them out on the scroll saw and now I, I'm trying to just dress them up a little bit. Right in here they need a little work and I'm going to do that on my spindle sander. There we go. Got them all prettied up now. Got a nice profile on the corner. And now the next thing we need to do is do a round over uh, on this little rail that goes on the front of the spice rack. You probably noticed that I was using a, a backer board here when I was running this through, through the router. Um, just, I wasn't sure these pieces are a little bit fragile and so I figured the best thing to do is go through with the, with the backer behind it. That way it's not nearly as apt to some, for an accident to happen. And at this point, I'm getting along far enough that I don't want anything to happen to it. This is going to be the bottom of the 
of the spice rack and the front of it I have rounded over on the top and bottom uh, to give it a nice profile and a, a finished look. I'll do the same thing to the top of the back piece that uh, attaches to the wall and then we'll move on. I've got one thing I'd like to do first before I do anything on anything else and that is I'm going to demonstrate how I get these spindles attached on this. What I do is attach this with some double stick tape or something uh, to the the bottom piece. Well as I believe I mentioned earlier I fastened the the rail and the bottom together and taped them in place so that they couldn't get away and then I've marked these holes three inches apart approximately to the center and coming from each direction so that I have equal space when I got to the middle and it turns out that it was exactly two inches from the back to the corner hole here and so I was able to discenter it on one inch for the side uh, spindle that's going to go on the side. So now what I'm going to do is untape it, take them apart and no one will ever see these pilot holes here in the bottom because they're going to be down below eye level and uh, so I haven't, I didn't go all the way through the top rail as you can see with my pilot hole and so uh, I'll be able to after I take them apart I'll be able to drill them from the appropriate size to a quarter inch which is the size of the of the tenon on on the spindle Well, I've got all the holes drilled, and it's time to dry fit and see how things turned out. And I've got all my little spindles set up here, oriented, so that they all are sitting in there the same direction. And we're just about ready to see how the, how the thing fits together. Sometimes it's a little bit of a hassle to get them to start. But once you get things rolling, why, it goes pretty good. Now we're starting to get somewhere. happening the way it's supposed to. Okay, I'm going to turn it around so you can see what the front of this thing looks like. It turned out pretty good, I'd say. Now it's time to glue all of this stuff in. Well, there it is all clamped up. The glue is on. This is one time I was really glad that the glue was kind of cold and it was a cool day. Otherwise, I would never have gotten all the, the spindles glued and all of the holes with glue in them. I would never have gotten done in time. But it's done, so I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Well, there it is, all finished and ready for the stain. And I think I'll just go with a clear poly on it and it'll be ready to hang up on the wall. This has been a really interesting project 
And I hope you are inspired a little bit, and maybe, just maybe, you'll try to do it yourself. Once again, what I did was make the length of it so that it matches the top of the of the cooking range, and it also will fit underneath between the the cabinets on each side of the stove, and I made it deep enough so that it will hold most of the spice containers and put a back on it that can be attached to the wall and took about 15 of the little uh, spindles I think they're called gallery spindles and the rest of it is made from western alder turned out very very nice I believe so until next week or when I get the next one put together, uh, this will be Wayne signing off, and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend, and God bless you.